Welcome everyone, Codename Soap here, coming at you today with a Skyrim bow tutorial. This video is designed to show you three main points. One, how I practice with the bow. Two, a couple of specialty shots and how to do them. And three, tying it all together. The bow we will be using in this video is the Nightingale bow. I have chosen it for a few main reasons. One, it is a good mix of speed range, and damage. And two, it is probably my most used bow and it is definitely a go-to. And three, it has some excellent enchantments that can get you out of some sticky situations. I like to do my practicing inside the Solitude Courtyard. You got some targets and some practice dummies. In earlier parts of the day, you don't have to worry about guards being out here honing their skills. What I usually like to do first is get close to these three targets to practice zoning in. I do this both standing and crouched to see the differences between the arrow's flight paths. With the target dummies, I'll set up slightly further away and only do standing moving shots. This gives me a way to simulate battle. As you can see, we weren't here early enough in the day to avoid the guards and their practice, but luckily we didn't bother them and did not cause a scene. After all of that, I come to this part of the courtyard. Here's where I like to do longer range practice. I'll do a few standing shots to get that zoned in. I'll also do some crouch shots from roughly the same position to get that zoned in as well. My final stationary target that I like to practice with is this barrel. I don't really have an objective as far as where I'm aiming, but I make sure to take a few standing shots and a few crouch shots. This gives me a mental note later on for if I'm trying to snipe a target from further away of what the trajectory might be. Now let's look at moving targets. Best moving targets in solitude? Well, of course, they're the birds. If you shoot them, no one's gonna mind. You're not shooting people, you're not shooting guards and they don't have regular patterns like people do. After finally hitting a few moving targets, we like to crank up the difficulty a little bit. And what do we do to do that? Well, we remove our HUD. I find that when you have no crosshair to show you where you're aiming, that's when you get the absolute best feel for your bow. You get to know where to aim when you're crouching, standing, walking, running, and everything in between. The best way to get used to having no HUD is to come into the marketplace. There are four shops with four signs on the outside that when you hit with an arrow, move and spin around. I treat this as a sort of obstacle course for myself to get used to, again, having no HUD. Short, medium, and long range shots all apply here. And it brings together a few things that we practice earlier in the session. Another way you can get used to this is also going through what we went through at the very beginning. The short, medium, and long range shots, crouch shots, standing shots, lob shots, and most importantly, moving target shots. The lob shot. The lob shot is pretty self-explanatory. You don't draw your bow all the way back and you let go. This lobs the arrow in an arc toward your target that can be very useful for some up close encounters. Also, it is particularly useful when you're trying to scout areas and figure out where enemies are by making a little bit of noise. The curveball tracking or strafe shot. This one is a bit more complicated. To do this, draw your bow all the way back while moving left or right and let go while continuing to move. If done correctly, this should cause the arrow to fly in a curve. This can be particularly useful for shooting around obstacles to hit your target, or if you want to shoot around someone who is not the target to hit your intended target instead. Now you've been seeing a few clips of this shot in action, but what I'm going to do for you now is break it down slow-mo and zoom in so you can actually see that the curve is real and is quite a useful tool. Now the zoomed in slow-mo. Right here is a freeze frame of when the arrow starts to leave the bow. According to our sneak eye, it should be hitting somewhere around that brick, the third one from the bottom. The arrow leaves the bow, curves, and hits the right shoulder of the target. 
Now how did this happen? Well, of course, it's a curve. Let's put these two frames together and see a comparison of where the arrow left the bow and where it finally hits. Now you can see with the side-by-side -side comparison, the one on the left is where the arrow left, the one on the right is right when it hit. But let's look at two more examples in motion really, really slowly. And for the final section in this video, we're going to put this all together. I'm going to give you a few in-game, live-action examples of everything we've talked about. The long shots, the crowd shots, the medium, the short, the lob, and the curveball. And one great way I've found to do this is at a little place called Silent Moon's Camp. And that does it for this tutorial video on how I like to use a bow. But before we go, as always, thank you for watching, hope you enjoy, and I'll see you guys later.